to go through the challenge and form their kind of understanding or starting to understand. Manuel? Yeah, so uh, as per my understanding, our, study, our uh, client for this week is uh, Arduino. Mm. It uh, provides uh, online mobile ad businesses, uh, and it uh, designs creative asset. Uh, no, uh, what do you call it? Mm. Yeah, creatives. Yeah. Yeah, creatives. Them which are dynamic. Yeah. 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 I think by dynamic creative, uh, it means that uh, mm, some images or uh, video assets that help the ad advertisement grow um, and uh, they are created dynamically as per uh, the uh, variants fed by the uh, organization Adulido in our case and our task is to add optimization to these dynamic creatives uh, uh, so a process called dynamic creative optimization uh, how uh, DCO is different from dynamic creatives, just dynamic creatives is that it adds uh, some kind of uh, automations. Mm, on real time, it, uh, mm, it sets the dynamic creatives uh, very personalized and uh, people or customers can see uh, ads or creatives that seem to uh, be made for themselves. And I think that's what we are supposed to uh, optimization of the dynamic creatives. Great. Using AI. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Emmanuel. I, I think that's accurate, especially as it is written. Uh, there will be slightly for there will be slight kind of um, shift from like I think the the one that is the name that I I knew intentionally it was slightly tricky the dynamic um, so basically creative optimization um what is it called uh, the, the dynamic creative optimization is actually slightly te technical terminology that we are not exactly looking for at the moment um, but there is a component of it that we are actually in this project would be much more interested which is relation relating the features of the creative to the basically a kpi or in this yeah exactly even if in the dynamic creative optimization it's still to increase performance and that performance the metrics are called kpis you know keep the performance indicators so in that in our case it's the click uh, the ctr uh, or just basically the um, yeah people to to click the last screen um and but we would be much more interested exactly instead of just live personalized ones much more to increase the kpi given the creative so it's both ident you know the the, the the dynamic creative optimization is trying to achieve the same thing but much more also it occupies both the personalization that means to be able to change also the creative dynamically as they get uploaded uh, or are they get uh, kind of loaded in the browser plus also what we are doing so but we will do the, the half part in this challenge but this what you mentioned is accurate um, um otherwise anyone else want to add their understanding the the different ways we we see it and we explain it it helps ourselves as well as others Anyone? You know, I need three to start. So you, just, you better raise the hand and then try to. 
based on your understanding. I'm sure more than three have seen the, the, the challenge document and more than three have probably read the kind of tasks. So, Sa. Yeah, I honestly was thinking you would say that, that you need three people in order to start. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I didn't actually uh, deeply read through what we are supposed to do this week, but I think it's a computer vision and deep learning uh, type of project. Again, I, I'm just I'm just here to fill that number three, and not to I'm I'm not going to provide any real value, but just uh, I am going through the tasks right now, and uh, understanding about the basics of computer vision and deep learning would be the first task to do. And I think there are some uh, tunings and some basic understandings we need to acquire in this part of the project. And I also think that this is going to be done on uh, an AWS instance, right? I, I, I think I saw that. In the, OK, yeah. so that is really going to be uh, helpful for uh, several trainees since this, this models or this uh, deep learning uh, Tasks might be really intensive on our PCs. And the next thing, as Emmanuel said, it would be to create this uh, this component extraction task, where I think it's going to be basically uh, some feature extractions based on given uh, based on given images or videos. I think and. Uh, Next, we'll be building this machine learning that will uh, predict uh, the key performance indicators given the creative features that we just extracted on task two. And I, yeah, as usual, there is going to be a presentation. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, reporting. And yeah, basically, I think that's it. Thanks, thanks, Fisa. I think that I, know, I, I really appreciate that you just filled the gap. That's what we do, right? When you feel and it's kind of like that, basically taking that initiative is what I want sometimes. It's like, okay, yeah, I, have, I haven't seen it, but I have seen this much. From the title, I can imagine it's like that. That's sufficient already. So thanks for, you know, just being and pushing that. And Margaret, I saw your hand Good. and it, it Um. Hi. Uh, hey. So from how I understand the challenge, I I haven't seen the data yet, but just from how I understand, I think we'll be given a set of ads or creatives, and we're supposed to do some kind of analysis on them. So maybe like screen scrapping and extract features like colors and different fonts and basically just features of an ad and once we have extracted the features i don't know how um then we can be able to uh study the features and analyze it uh, do some idea on which features um stand out more or which features bring more much more engagement and then we can then put these features into a machine learning model to uh, get the KPIs so basically the performances of different features are on the screen and aim is to get uh, the aim is to get uh, the most uh, uh, the to get the features that make an ad much more intuitive um, so I also saw some place that had uh, uh, it mentions that Adludio does real-time bidding for um, 
for creatives. Um, and I, I wasn't so sure about it, but is it like a, is it just like a regular bidding, but for ads to see which one, which ad will perform better? That's a question. I mean, a real time bidding is much more that when a user comes in, you know, when you basically you you go to a website and you do you you kind of load it, there is an advertisement coming, right? Just inside that that browser, basically in that inside that um, link URL, and that one is actually people bait on it because everyone wants to show, you know, based on your user description, they it, it's given to them the user description, and then you basically are given um, like to be, you know, you're, you're for many people to show bait, and basically many people to show ad, and then they bait on it. You know, how do you know, how do you determine that? That, that part of like determining who shows the ad is the real-time bidding so everyone bids and then the winner shows and that's basically just much more of competition on the space and that space is a digital space in this case um any 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 url that you are browsing does that clarify yes it does so what i'm guessing is uh once we uh measure the kpis we can be able to predict which ad will perform better so we can use it for real-time bidding make decisions on real-time bidding sure yeah it's connected absolutely so the real-time bidding basically is you can consider it targeting you have you have a like a user comes in you have a data basically by a user in a, in a case you would be described by a data point in n-dimensional space and that n-dimensional space could be your the os the operating system you're using the phone type you're using the browser type you're using you know the country you are in the basically there are so many n dimensions basically that describes you a user right and and then what and then you're trying to find if that whether that user is going to be able to basically get converted and in this case the conversion let's say is that whether you are going to engage or whether you're going to after engagement you're going to go to um the end screen you know whether you will watch basically the video and then after that you would basically click the the call to action so all the, then that's the probability i am assigning as a data scientist at a video right so I'm trying to determine how much should I assign. And based on that probability, I would bid on. Like, because if if I feel that you are likely to do that, I would probably bid higher. And then when I bid higher, and if I'm correct, if my model is correct, then you do you you do exactly what I expect, which means you are more likely to engage or to, to go to the call to action. And then that means I I get what I want, which means I, mean, I deliver the uh, the campaign better. Right. And then, of course, not only it's a user target, but also you more likely are going to engage or go more likely to click the call to action if the creative is attractive to you. Right. So so one is called campaign optimization, where just based on only features that are the, the, it's called inventory, the user that's called campaign optimization. And then the creative optimization is when you're trying to optimize actually the creative itself or the ad such that the user engages so now it's linking between you the user and the ad like um, or the ad features basically so the by creative optimization we mean the second part and by campaign optimization we mean the first part where actually it's targeting and you know, identifying whether people like ad or whether this type of people who have this type of phone and this type of whatever they are more likely to click on ad you know like it you know just without considering assuming the creative is fixed like that means it's good enough so um, there is that does that is that clear uh, yes thanks okay 
So I am presenting the challenge. And as usual, you, if you expect that I was, I'm going through, no, I'm going to ask you the other ones. What don't you understand so that I can explain from the challenge. So you now can ask because I can't see. So um, you can unmute and ask, you know, what part, even if it's just like, I don't understand the business objective, you can start from that. I know I haven't looked at the data, so can you tell me about the data? You can ask. You can ask about the tasks. You know, okay, like I want to understand the tasks, but let's be question driven. Okay. So, I I have a question. Yeah. Um, I I don't think I I haven't managed to access the data yet. Yes. Can you take us through a sample and just explain the data? Okay, I don't have, but let me, let me just actually do exactly that. Maybe that one, there is already a session for it, but let me just do that. Actually, it's easier. So last time, So uh, I'm going to change window so that you can see. Do you see the terminal? Is it visible? Yes, it's loading. Huh? Yes. Okay. It's visible. So when you unzip the challenge.zip, you will get assets and then you will get performance data in CSV. So I assume you are seeing my screen. So if you don't see my screen, you can. No, 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 yeah, we can't see it. Okay. Uh, there is one screen on. It's unfortunate, maybe. So even now, you can't see? Yes, uh, we can see it too. You can see now? No, 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 we can't. No. Okay. I think it's just that my browser is not updated, so it can't show anything other than the um, this one. So the only way, so let's just say, let's just describe it by, um, why don't I just do this? And then I copy that and then I display. I'm going to copy. In the challenge document itself, then there's, let's make it here. I don't think your screen no, is okay. I understand that, but I am just. Okay. And then. Okay. 
Okay, and then yeah, I'm just almost done, don't worry. Okay, so I can now share my screen. You probably would see the data, right? Like my screen now. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so the data is like what you are given is the challenge data and the challenge data has two folders uh, two files like one is a folder assets and the other one is performance data this data and and if you look at now the asset data the asset data contains um some folder and that folder is basically the folder name is what is kind of what you will find in the performance data as the game key Okay, so that basically describes the creative that was run uh, in the campaign and to whom we now have a performance data. That means it's engagement rate, it's whatever, like the click, um, the click um, or the, the CTR, the, the click through rate. Okay, and so the folder name itself is a data in the assets. So because that, that one you would use to relate to the top performance, the second step, the machine learning step, you would need that. Now, if you look now just one of the folder, then what you have is that you have files, okay? And those files are the ones that are extracted from, from the, basically the creative. So this basically you can con consider a creative or an ad is just that, right? And then from that, because this is not one object, it is a complex object. And some, you know, the Adlurio team has prepared it in such a way that you get just images, right? Image that reflect what is important. So each of them, then you would know the CTA uh, page, you know, you will get more explanation tomorrow, but the before page, the after page, you know, the after copy, preview, blah, blah. So you get the landing page. And then if there are video, the video and the and, and all that. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Margaret? Um, yes. So one creative will have multiple images and multiple it can have video as well. But let's for now, for all practical purposes, we just only consider images. But you could you could get basically that you know tomorrow they can explain to you you can get also some metadata on the video um, including you know the the frame rate the blah blah the you know so many different things but let's imagine we can consider the image as one and they will explain to you about is here so it can explain to you once we are um, we are done with this uh, challenge box great okay any other question for Sam and then Emmanuel? Yeah, just on top of my head, a simple Google search might suffice, but why exactly are we calling them creatives? This is my first. And my second question would be, what is the final product? Okay, so, I mean, they're creative because they really are a complex object. Like, I mean, it's, well, it's basically the known terminology. I mean, maybe it's, if you really think of it, a designer designs, and the very natural language for it is that the designer really, each of the ads, normally we, we call them ads and banners if they are not, if they're, you know, static, normal image that you synthesize. 
but if it is artistic, usually, uh, you know, they, they, it implies that there is a lot more processing and design and every basically art is an artist work somehow. So you could think of it that way. And then the end goal is that you basically, first is features, you know, the features you are extracting, you know, they want to see, I think, you know, as um, in the document, they see that, you know, Ludil uh, has put, so, um, so they are interested to see also your, your way of different features that you could come up with. Um, so, and also just it's here, successful completion means you have identified representative components and designed a generalized pipeline that extracts and organizes features for the next step in this one. Okay. So the very first part and the most, you know, basically if you do poor here, the next part is useless basically, but if you do good here, the next part is interesting. So, so this one is that, and then the second part is to build. So there are two end products. The second one is to build, now you have comp features that you now can do some machine learning and to determine which feature is driving some of the performances that you have seen, such that you can you can use that for future um, synthesization, you know, automatic synthesization of creatives or aromatic cre variation creation, anything else you can think of. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. The feature, uh, the feature is going to be extracted from the, from the files, whether it yes. is a PNG, whether it's of an image file or a video file. No one, yeah. a creative is not one, yeah, but, but and it's not yeah. also the same. Or for different creatives may have different number of files, but you you just extract features from that for that for that creative. So you can define, of course, what yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I'm on it. And then I let me kill. Okay, what are the uh, numbers before the names of the images in videos? Uh, so are the game key. Some kind of uh, tags? Hmm? So the game key, you mean these ones? These ones? The you numbers the right before the, the, the names huh? of the images. Yes, I can see. Yeah. Do you mean these ones or do you mean this this uh, dates blah blah? No, right before the names. So this one two three eight whatever. Yeah, yeah. Are there some kind uh, so of those are, tags? No, no. This one is because I'm LSing. So that's basically these are just the size, just the size. in in bytes. Okay. okay. So this one is just uh, one kilobyte. This one is 22 kilobyte, no, uh, 220 kilobyte and stuff like that. As you can and see, the video is a very megabyte. So it's four megabyte. Okay. Anyone else? It was uh, Ayla Mikhail then, Ayla Mikhail and then Michael. Okay. Uh, my question is, uh, in the data, I only see the assets part and uh, the performance of uh, those assets. Uh, and also, is there, uh, in the designing of the advertisements, is there any standard, like, uh, for example, uh, a creative must have a logo or uh, a text or any other things, like, uh, just like uh, a document, for example, in a document, the document have header, footer, paragraph, and other things like in the creative design. Is there uh, anything like this? Uh, and also, my other question is, uh, if it has, uh, if it has uh, those things, uh, is the data labeled? Like the image is the image labeled? No. So simple answer is no. So that if that was the case you know, we wouldn't go for a lot more of the feature extraction. But so you can think of there's a canvas as an HTML5 canvas, only it your drawing. You can draw anything. And uh, software that is making 
allows you to do different things. And that means surely you can think of these three as the kind of breaking down element, right? So there is definitely what we call engagement screen. That basically is the first thing that when the, when the uh, advertisement is loaded, when the ad is loaded, you would get something. In that advertisement, the, the arrangement of things is not predefined. That means it's the designer defines. So sometimes there are multiple ways of interacting with, it's click and tap, you know, here, uh, or drag uh, or swipe, different type of engagements that initiates basically your engagement. That's why we call engagement that element. And then there could be, you know, a brand, that brand is represented by a certain background. You could have image, you could have text. The text could be here, could be there. But almost always what you know is that there is an engagement. So if it has an engagement, if it's not a banner, and the engagement has a certain area. So that means it's basically, you know, um, it's not just only that you have to click that point, it's a radius that you, you have, right? So that's the area that you start the engagement. For example, if you can make the entire screen the area, that means you really can increase your, of course, you can increase engagement. But because by mistake also someone clicks here, they start. But you are, of course, that we know that that really increases performance. But that is also a cheat because you're basically cheating your way. And people are not interested in the ad. They just clicked by mistake. So the, the more small, the smaller you make it, it's just that someone actually really clicked by intention, right? So th that's why. So things like that, most of this call, call to actions, like in the engagement, the engagement part, in the end screen, the uh, CTA, basically, um, or the, the, basically the click one, there is an area bounded to them. And then there is probably a text, there, there can be an image, you know, by image it's kind of, but it is not, and then in between there is a video, um, you, there might not be a video, so there is basically, you can't just only understand it in this way, but much more than that, there isn't structure. You can think of it, there is no structure. And in between that is also, of course, behind that is a JavaScript, you know, kind of that, that does the tracking. Whatever you do is tracked. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Michael? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting it right, but uh, the idea of creatives is, I think, it's about features on the advertisement canvas plate, right? The, sorry, say it again. So uh, I was uh, I was having a trouble understanding about uh, creatives. What does what do we mean by creatives and I think we are uh, referring to them as the components of the advertisement. Oh, okay. Is that your one or another one? No, that's not mine. And uh, uh, and if uh, I'm getting them right, if I'm getting them right. Uh, Creatives are like independent features which are uh, found on the uh, uh, advertisement canvas, right? Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to show you, like, you know, whenever you browse something, uh, unfortunately, no, okay. BBC doesn't show, but cme.com. Huh? Okay. Uh, uh, did you share it in the ah, in the message? Um, so, and instead of that, I'm about to share it in the message so you can all click. So, this is one like how it appears in your mobile. <laughs> So, which components of this advert are like uh, we consider them as creatives? Everything. 
in everything the inside the image is like when you in your phone in your phone when you are now bbc.com this thing will come like this whole thing as an ad you know it's just you can recognize it this is much more afraid the frame i think you can actually not frame so this is just that yeah, yeah. so, so my, everything is that yeah my now, question was, i do uh -huh, go on. so how are we going to uh, like uh, extract or consider things inside this uh, yeah, advertisement so you, so like the, there are different so the, algorithms the like uh, are yeah, cascading sorry, uh, let, 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 let's let's stop there because i think you are ahead of yourself and then you're kind of it, it might it's might not help because this is complex as you can understand so the very first part is that Lulio team has done this thing they took screenshots or whatever you know they will tell you how they did it and they have just given you images and now those images normally this is a complex object so in the complex object you see like it will do this video and this is the the element that learn more is basically the last now this is the end screen and if i click this one learn more i go somewhere right now they have done so here you have seen exactly what i was showing here that basically there was the very first screen that was of course dynamic it's telling you to do something and then when you do something you get the post engagement and then when you do that you get the click screen okay so basically that so unfortunately i have to go but i hope that that answers your question or not yeah yeah okay so then i would let ababa answer the questions as well as also tell you the exactly the different um components or why it's useful for them and so this is your opportunity to really get to ask as many questions and learn as much as possible okay so everybody can continue thanks hello nice to meet you all i think it's second time for me to see you all so i will just dive into just saying a few things about the challenge as well. And also allow me to share my screen, just small slides. Can you see my screen? Can you see it? Yes, we can. Awesome. So, primarily, this creative optimization challenges uh, actually like build collaboratively with ten academy to uh, get talent who yes. can further help us in working around this new initiative that we have to automatically yes. generate. Uh, creative component that the complex creative uh, build that you were seeing when you was demoing it with some AI driven approach so you can you can take it as no not as a kind of just a challenge that uh, help you to understand or uh, learn about computer vision rather kind of challenge that we as a team at Ludio we will also be working behind the uh, progress just to identify best talents for us and uh, to hire for a couple of open position for us. So just to give you kind of uh, understanding on the business as a whole, I think uh, I saw a couple of uh, misunderstanding when you were uh, raising some question to the to Yabi. So let me start with who we are. So Arduino is actually a global tech company. It's not, it's not actually kind of advertiser, rather an ad company that uh, deliver platform solution for three main areas. That's the creative production. So we have complex and interactive creative uh, generation process. So we have designers who are talented in 
like putting some amazing yes. arts and interactions yes. and we actually convert that design component to some interactive uh, ads using some dev components there with some javascript then that will be uh, actually displayed in multiple channels it could be connected tv in the seed uh, in the, when the channel is ctv could be mobile or could be web so uh, it's not actually limited to mobile advertisement rather our primary goal is optimizing the creative for the mobile but we are delivering in of the channel that we can reach to all the uh, audience and another important thing is the algorithm algorithmic targeting so we have platform or algorithms that enable clients to use and provide their data or their creative put on top of that and that will be on top of them so in the real time uh, bidding there are concepts of uh, like ssp the scp that's the supply side platform and also the demand side platform the demand side platforms are like all uh, like platform that manage advertisement wing and the supply side platform is the one that bidding is takes place and that's the publisher side platform so if we take, take an example let's say if i wanted to see uh, one uh, publication in CNN, when I log in into that, my account, my subscribed account, what CNN does, CNN will be treated as a publisher there. So CNN distribute my information to SSP. Then SSP actually distributes to multiple SAPs and also multiple uh, advertisers there. So there is a concept of ad exchange there. So in that distributed channel, what is happening is all the uh, advertisers actually try to uh, score that impression or the user information that SSP is releasing. So as I said, advertisers are running uh, behind the SAP. So when the information reaches to the SAP, the SAP is actually like initiating uh, all the algorithms that are deplo deployed for like different kind of digital advertiser companies there. Mm -hmm. So we have also similar solutions there to be in multiple uh, DSCPs. So what we do with the impression can we try to rank that, score that, to try to predict the likelihood of bidding on this uh, impression to get uh, uh, our KPI. Actually, KPI could be engaging. That is when the user click on the first screen or the KPI could be the, uh, click that's the, when the user interact on the cta or it could be uh, there are actually multiple domain uh, specific kpis there the bcr btr conversion when we are expected to, to learn the user from our ad to the client page let's say if we are bidding on yamaha uh, uh, ad and, and uh, like the user is expected to click on the final cta button and expect to land into Yamaha page, so we get paid actually when the user land on the, the final, uh, not click on when they click on the CTA, rather when they live into the user platform or the user website to do some, uh, could be purchasing or could be doing or looking into the, their website itself. But the KPI is different, it depends on how the contract agreement is happened between ad video and uh, the, the real product owner. So that's one part. So there we are trying to do algorithmic targeting. So we are understanding the behavioral analysis for the user, current uh, user who is looking into the page and also analyzing our creative self, whether like displaying this ad to this user is guaranteed for us because we get paid only when the user do some interaction to our ads. If we win the impression, that means we pay for the publisher, for the CNN, but if the user can't, uh, let's say, like watch into the video content of the creative or interact on the, uh, like all the interaction events attached to the creative, that means we lost our money. So that's affecting our budget. So that's the main thing we are trying to do, understanding the user and also understanding some environment uh, issue from where the user is coming, could be uh, like location related, weather related, or it could be age, gender related information because of the subscription data. 
that we are getting from the publisher. Another is the inside. So as part of that platform, we have also extended solution. So we created uh, amazing creative or add unit and we deploy that into the SCP and bid on the behalf of the client with our algorithm target. And in the real time, we try to show the insight. So how we are reaching, how actually our algorithm target is uh, doing with, where we list kind of insight visualization tools also there as part of the, uh, the kind of solution platform that we provide for the client. So we here quarter in UK, but no limited to UK. We serve more than 17 countries, including US, Australia, Europe, and Asia. So you can see how big the uh, company is. So what's creative for Alludio is important question. So most of you were actually asking this question in the last conversation with Yabi. So Alludio has varieties of innovations related to this creative design. And actually, that made us one of, uh, like, Actually, like we created our own kind of proprietary tool there, so that that's created as IP for our media. So, what actually like make us different from all the competitors is the way we create our creatives. Our creatives are multiple interaction time, and we know how uh, to attract the user within that complex stuff. So we are not actually displaying something in the page and ask user to just click only on the uh, engage or do some interaction rather uh, with like data driven approach that we are doing we try to actually understand the user activity and enhance the process of the creative itself continuously so that enabled us to create our own ip in this creative uh, production business in the uh, digital advertisement so what are interaction types that's important question so let me just show you a couple of things you may see these names in the assets folder so like uh, could be cta engagement type or could be swipe could be something related to that so from the challenge, there are three steps that you see. The first one is the engagement screen. There, uh, that's the first screen that the user see and interact with to start the kind of content to be displayed for the user to see or uh, get some important information from that, or actually like takes the user to the final CT screen that you are looking for. So. For the user interaction, we have different uh, options. If I just show you a couple of... Uh, so this is swipe nature, this is tab, when the user is only expected to tap on the page. So, yeah, so here, this is the creative that we designed for uh, Netflix. So if you swipe up, so you will see some. So the first one that uh, ask the user to swipe up is actually the engagement type. But this one is the watch now component is the important one. No. The, the last one, the CTA component is this one, the watch now one. So when the user click on that watch now means we are tracking behind, we have also our server that track the journey of our creative whenever it's displayed in a user device or could be website or could be in the CTV, connected TV. So our our server tries to track the journey of the creative so that we know whether the user clicked on that ad or not. So the information that you get in the performance data inside the data folder that the app was showing is actually the historical performance of all our creatives. So you can, I, I'm gonna share this uh, slide with you so you can click and check samples of the kind of engagement. And these are very important actually. So understanding what type of creative needs, what type of engagement, which category of engagement is also very important when you do some analysis. So 
think of uh, like as part of the feature analysis think of uh, kind of suggesting or uh, determining what type of engagement is, is actually useful for the category or like kind of uh, could it be doing some analysis from the data that I shared with you and determining this engagement type is also very important so that designers don't uh, invest their time while thinking about what type of engagement uh, I should use for this creative when the new request is coming. So there are also some advanced kind of uh, creatives that uh, requires some sophisticated user interaction, could it be uh, uh, puzzle or physics kind of, or could it be just do some pattern. So it's actually, if you look into this, so we know to attract the user, we know how to put this whole section. This is multiple frame, but the user expects to move this section and uh, like correctly fix the puzzle so that the user can see the next screen or the next information. So you may think of how how this much complex kind of interaction can bring uh, clicks through it, but we know that's actually the main data driven action that we do. And thing is expected from us when we do analysis with such kind of action is so instead of putting this text here what if we put it here or put it here or instead of putting this internal section what if we put it here so does that matter for the user attraction kind of analysis expected for us uh, uh, getting context on what i'm trying to say maybe uh, because i'm not seeing you feel free to pause me do you have any yes, I have a question. Uh, in regards to the last point you mentioned, is that um, the knowing of uh, which type of uh, uh, font or which type of text we should present uh, to the end user, is that uh, considered uh, an A-B testing? Mm, so you can think of uh, putting that, but you can also uh, consider some text generators. So you can put some NLP uh, kind of tool that helps you to determine sales friendly headlines and also CTA texts, contextualize for the current campaign requirement because you know the brand, you know the brand description to whom you are actually creating the design. So taking that as an input, you can generate some uh, short and kind of sales-friendly text that can be displayed in the ad. So everything testing is actually uh, is costly. So that means you need to generate multiple variants and do some A-B testing. So that will be, if it is an automated version, that will be something that precious. We will be moving into that, by the way. So without human involvement, an AI assisted system will gonna generate all the creative variants. Could it be single creative with multiple color combination, or like changing the background and the foreground color, the position, and also the direction of the, the same. Swipe left can be changing into swipe right, or swipe up or swipe down. Determining that's also very critical because what matters is the user attraction. We wanted to actually uh, bring or like uh, understand our user attention so that we can easily uh, reassemble the creative itself with some automated way. But think of that, but that's not, not cost effective way if you are thinking of putting multiple variants, running it simultaneously, and uh, checking. So you are in a budget constrained way, right? So no client can guarantee you to run multiple creative and you are only, I mean, the budget allocated is only for the single creative. So if your system is doing that in background and can able to optimize within that constrained budget, that's fine, maybe testing can work. But instead you may think of working on some uh, deep semantic analysis on the text and using some text generators so that you can generate some headlines and important uh, 
kind of texts instead of using some heavy statistics. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, so let me go back to my slide. So you can play with, I, I'm gonna share this one. So you can play with all the uh, links I have attached here, just as an example. Okay, so why we need computer vision is important question, right? You already saw our designers can design. This is not actually uh, uh, kind of creative generated by AI, rather our designers, our talent. We have amazing designers based in UK and the US. So they created this skill today. They are working on that. But we wanted to move away from manual what's the necessity is important right so what matters is attention here as you have mentioned just increasing this if i just show you so uh, this engagement section if we just increase this section to the full screen whenever the user click if we feel we are tracking engagement we can achieve that that's easy right Increasing the engagement size of the creative itself can grant us just to get engagement. But that's not actually based on users' attention, rather it's forced the kind of engagement. So we don't want to go in that direction. Rather, we want to understand our user, which company of the creative is attracting our user, and particularly invest on that, so that when the designers try to design it, so we can uh, actually manipulate their mind by suggesting objects that should be included. So let's say, think of, instead of using these uh, ladies to design this puzzle, what if we use some animal, let's say. If we actually notice putting this kind of puzzle in this creative is affecting our KPI. So that's something expected from us, understanding from multiple perspectives and suggesting some objects that could be included in the creative and the text, the direction, the background color, and relating that with the context, the behavioral analysis of the users based on region, based on, uh, let's say, the weather condition. So having that all in mind and creating the kind of interactive and dynamic creative is something expected and it's already now uh, like i just included two statements here from ias and uh, google so as you, as you can see ads that are relevant to the audience or the feature people who are actually interacting with the ad can actually increase your attention of the average ad. that is uh, basically money in the business so as we are actually kind of company who is uh, working or focused on this digital uh, advertisement, understanding the user's attention and what attracts them is very crucial for them. So here, our aim is actually uh, applying computer vision and the NLP that can help us to suggest some design parameters and design components that designers can use or an AI assisted system can use to generate that simulated creative so we are moving to applying some diagnosis over the ad units at frame level or could be a scene level for the video and determine the relative contribution of all the categories that are features that we detected or recognized from our creative to the kpi that can be used to enhance the creative production process uh, Yeah, can thanks. I was just okay. curious. Yeah, yeah, I, I can actually. Can can you? Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I was just curious on how you are actually identifying which which one is better. I mean, you mentioned what if in this uh, female model or female uh, human. What if we may take it uh, like a bear or an animal, right? How would you know which one will perform better? Or is that the main goal of this whole? Uh, 
thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I have exactly. A, a kind you, of, you come to the point now. You come to the point now. So the main goal of this challenge is actually determining uh, which components of the creatives are most useful in what scenario. So we provided you some limited data, but that is uh, fairly distributed. So play with that and see if the components you extracted the same. Uh, forget that, like the object scenario that I uh, mentioned here, the legs. Rather, think of the color. So we, you have already historical uh, creatives to their performance data. So if you can able to extract some features from uh, data that could be um, maybe interpretable features and non interpretable that you generate with some deep learning layers or with just some image filters or interpretable features, you use some tool that helps you to extract colors, text, the position of the text already in the existing data that's given to you. If you have the pipeline that can able to extract that all feature, and if you you have already game keys to their performance data, let's say you generated from one game key that's from one ad unit or the creative you generated thirty features, and for that thirty feature you have performance data there. So uh, you're getting the picture now. So if you can able to convert the creative into some category that you feel that is very important for the business or for the creative optimization, then you have already the regression, that's the ER and ER the CTR, ER the, CTR, the historical performance the creative in the real-time production. So all the data is not actually simulated. All the data we give to you is the real data the real performance of all historical creatives. So try to play with video and also all the images, including the asset folder, extract some meaningful categories from that, map that with the performance data, see it, which components or which features that you created are contributing to, to the uh, performance. So two things uh, can be used. It could be if you do some feature interaction and use the KPI rate as a uh, kind of uh, rank or rate for the model so that model can do feature interaction and try to learn or rank the features based on the performance you defined. Or you can just do some, uh, use some machine learning technique, could be random for us just to find which components delivering uh, or like uh, contributing to the performance for the regression value you have. That's the historical KPI rate performing the real uh, business. Does that make sense? It's really nice, I think. Yeah, that really makes sense. And like, jumps, uh, like pushed my uh, kind of... So I have one question. We have this, this key this performance indicators for an existing features? So you mean... Uh, like under the, data, the given data? So, yeah. yeah, so in the given data, there is in the performance data, there are two columns, uh, three columns actually. The game key, that refers to the folder name in the assays, and we have two ARMs. Uh, CTR column that show the engagement performance of that particular creek and the CTR performance of the that CTR is those users who actually completed to uh, industry to view the entire ad up to the industry. The ER component is showing the like likelihood of that, uh, no, no, likelihood actually, the rate of. Uh, users from the entire impression we have, how many users actually uh, like interacted with the first screen of this ad. And the CTR is showing how many users interacted with the end screen of that ad, given the impression we bought. 
Yeah, so yeah, I actually so we can we can extract these features and we can map it to their individual performance indicators in order to like you said group this uh, creatives in several groups in order to create in order to create a better creative, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I think yeah. That's... Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna limit you. What we are we are looking for is actually someone who is thinking out of the box. So think of actually doing deep diagnostics over the creative, the computer vision level diagnostics, and just determine some important feature from that. That could be, as I say, some interpretable features and non-interpretable features that could be layers from the computer vision, or you may do some image filtering with some could be Gaussian filtering to extract some features, convert that, convert the creative itself into some binary and generate some features from that and try to actually see that features that recognize this contributing to the KPI or not. That's the main task. Awesome. So, Thank you very much. So just an extension. So as I said, we are uh, moving into building an AI assisted and automated creative production tool with minimum uh, designers uh, involvement here. Because if we have an AI assistant, AI system that run in background that suggests all the components we want, let's say, use this color foreground for this asset, use this object, put it in this direction, the emotion of human face for the object should be this type and uh, could be the type of the engagement and the, the position the game type i mean it could be what which one to use tap or swipe or scrap or kind of complex patterns that i was showing last time what should be the size of the engagement is that uh, like where to put that engagement area of interest What's the aspect ratio, the intensity, the saturation? I'm just suggesting a couple of features that you, you may look into. So those are very important for the image aesthetics or the uh, creative aesthetics by themselves. And also, like, yeah, we include some amazing, uh, actually useful links in the uh, challenge document. You can also deep dive into those kind of documents and understand what features can help in this industry. So what we want, very important one, so we want kind of tool that actually use some CV and NLP techniques to segment or filter an image frame or video scene and recognize those critical components. The critical is very important. Critical to what? The creative optimization not just for the image. So look it from the perspective of attracting the user who is bringing it to the creative itself. So we provide uh, limited data, it's around 1K plus creative with their performance. So having this data scarcity, training uh, deep learning model is something you are going to look into. So what we do want to see is actually we know and want to allow you to use some API solutions. There are a lot of API solutions that help you to extract some image component. But because we are trying to design our own proprietary tool, we want someone who can easily build on top of what we have. So that's why we are uh, challenging you to use some of the shelf tools, open source tools, and try to actually like enhance those integrate multiple tools that determine can help you to recognize multiple categories let's say for text you may use other one for the colors for the luminosity saturation anything that you feel is important for the tasks that you are working on feel free to use multiple tools stack that all together and uh, do some uh, pipeline that helps uh, us to give an ad unit that's the creative and determine very lucky contribution of the categories that you determine in this uh, diagnostics step. And this is a kind of bonus work, and I will appreciate uh, much if you actually put some effort on this area. That is, so once you determine that, generate that, how to visualize that for uh, like some uh, non technical person? So, how to show 
the color in the background is actually contributing to the KPI. Or the position of uh, could it be the engagement text that you clear or CTA is contributing to the uh, KPI is very important. So there you are expected to do some uh, annotation tasks. That's extended one. And uh, I will be more interested on this one. Okay. Um, I I think I posted a question on the chat box about the KPIs. Are they already predetermined, or are we supposed to come up with our own KPIs? KPIs, you mean? So uh, there are multiple KPIs in this business, but we are we only delivered now engagement and uh, click through it. So that data is already there in the performance data. You have engagement rate and also click through rate for all the creatives that we include in that set for them. Can this answer? Um, yes. Awesome. So my final word will be we are hiring, as I said from the very beginning. So we are looking into a couple of best talent. Could be two, three or more from Pinacad. Particularly, we will be actually filtering the team from uh, based on this challenge. So the focus area is content vision and the NLP because of the new uh, extension uh, in our work. That is the creative optimization one using the like, AI assistant tool. So particularly, we will be looking for the image segmentation of the detection someone who has good understanding on the text generation, transfer learning as a whole for both image and uh, text, deep learning, semantic annotation, as I said, annotation, I mean, that is actually leveling the segments that you determine that's very critical for the KPI and the creative. Annotating that and putting the level uh, could be something you may con considering an image recommendation. So. Like, usually what's happening in the designing process is so like the client just give us some narrations, descriptions about the product they want to, uh, they want us to advert or design the creative. But sometimes they, they, they forget to include assets that's actually the video and also the image that are expected to be included as part of the design. So what's challenging currently for our designers is determining what image is best suit for in which scenario kind of. So we are looking into a tool that suggests uh, or recommend an image given some descriptive information that the client provided related to brands. So it's not part of this work, but just uh, touching this all as part of your work will uh, give us kind of uh, good clue to understand your talent and easily uh, deal with you. So someone who can able to understand and work with transfer learning in a both uh, image and text, as I said, and put things out of the box and bring kind of continuous innovative idea is uh, one we are looking for. So yeah, it's just kind of highlight, but tomorrow one of our machine learning engineer will gonna meet you just to uh, show you a couple of, just kind of a startup work, like how, what components we extracted, where we are, and also what the data is kind of stuff so we purposely limited uh, you only look for image and the video content we uh, uh, exclude all the metadata and campaign brand related information that's the uh, actually kind of intentional stuff the reason is we only wanted to actually evaluate you from the perspective of computer vision and nlp skill not from the perspective of machine learning so yeah that's it from my end so maybe if you have any question any idea you will come
cool. I always consider silence as like either you missed entire thing or you have you cut good. Okay, Margarita. Um, there was another question on where exactly do you post your where exactly do you run your ads? Which platforms? So yeah, so uh, that's actually kind of challenging, complex question to answer, but just to put it uh, in a simple term. So an ad is actually served in the DSCP. So as I said, in the DSCP, so we are currently uh, bidding on the TTD, Zander, DB360, that is the Google's ad space, TTD ad space, Zander ad space, and also the uh, Amazon ads. So, and for us, so all the journey, as I said, we have ad tracker server that track the event, all the user interaction to our ad for all the information we want with this particular ad. So if that answers this question, or uh, you wanted to see some something different. If I understand you asking for where you, where we run the ad, right? um yes like the final platforms like are they on so different social medias or on websites yeah so that's where i was i was mentioning actually the publisher so um so where where to publish our ad uh, depends on our optimization algorithm so our, what our bidding algorithm does is in real time tries to see our effectiveness on the historical performance of the creative and try to suggest the dimensions where to place and the publisher. So could it be site, could it be city, be connected in the connected TV, which program? Or is that the real time one or kind of stored online video? If it is like uh, YouTube also, like that's related to the scoring algorithm we have. We try to score the creative sensitiveness and also the campaign description to the uh, all the publisher list we have. That is all the uh, websites that user can subscribe and see, and also all the mobile applications and yeah, related. So it could be mobile app, it could be website, it could be social media, it could be connected TV, it could be YouTube. Uh, okay. So where to target this user depends on our bidding algorithm. That's where the abuse mission from the very beginning. Manuel, I think you were also. Okay. Change your mind. Good one. Awesome. So does that make sense? Can you clarify what kind of API? Okay, API I mean any kind of computer uh, vision tool. Like there are APIs from Amazon, API from Microsoft, API from Google, uh, so on, so on. So don't use some already uh, deployed solutions just to extract some component instead. Like there are open source tools for image segmentation, object detection, color text, CV can also help you. So maybe tomorrow, uh, Milky will be giving kind of tutor on this, just what startup works uh, are there from our end. So you may, he may highlight a couple of tools you may look into. But yeah, I mean, yeah using some already existing tools no appreciate it. we wanted to create some ip tool for us cool so i think it was good time i hope you got some points uh, and our interest as a whole um, Margarit, just you have questions? When oh. you're real time bidding uh, stuff, mm -hmm. what 
are some of the just a few features that they that it considers for you to um, serve ads to different uh, to different different users. So as I mentioned, one of the advantage for uh, uh, our Ludio is we have our own ad uh, tracking server. So wherever our ad is placed, we track the historical performance. So per day, our tracking server may generate like uh, hundreds of millions of impressions in multiple campaign. So we know which contexts are working in which uh, like that's the log data. The SP generates in every three minutes, the SP generates that log data in the dump into our SC bucket. So we process that data. That's historical journey of our apps. So using that as an input, our bidding algorithm try to create custom targeting strategy. So think of like which uh, user category should I focus, like which uh, operating system users use what operating system which uh, phone type or kind of users who most likely uh, like subscribing to which like a kind of site, let's say, kind of the suggestion will be use CNN, uh, like users in the CNN who uh, has like OS of like could be Windows and uh, or could let's just forget like Android and uh, like with operating system and uh, CNN will decide with a uh, kind of browser could be Chrome kind of suggestion. So we try to analyze that data. It's big data with like around hundreds of features. The dimension is also big. So from that we try to actually uh, learn which feature combinations uh, work in what scenario so we know uh, where to focus our ta primary target uh, from the client initially when the campaign created what we take from the client is like uh, targeting strategies the objective is that the brand awareness is that the purchase intention or what we want to increase and also the uh, strategy is like which user uh, audience group we want to focus that age group, location group, or like gender group kind of information is here. So with what the algorithm try to does actually is try to score our historical data and determine most likely inventory lists that can give uh, the KPI in this like predefined uh, constraint that is the uh, client specifications. Then we wanted to, then the next steps actually how much, uh, how, uh, like the amount of bid value I should associate with this score list. So it's a kind of two layer work. The first one is scoring the impression itself and finding inventory list that can uh, give us a kind of guarantee on the KPI and also uh, amount of, like, kind of the, the penny I should actually add to that feeding values something that algorithm is working on. So think of learning from historical data. So we started for the last five years in this domain. So we have that much huge data and like we have clients from different areas I mentioned, 70 countries. So think of how this the data is. And we served uh, around 1.8 million creatives. So, having that all data, trying to actually uh, learn from that big data is giving us uh, kind of guaranteed performance. And that's why our video is making kind of huge difference in the domain. Uh, does that make sense, Mark? Absolutely, yes. So, yeah, uh, in the beginning of 
I heard the other one saying something about the afternoon uh, session being merged with this one. So I I think this this is the afternoon session that has been merged. So maybe I I just want you to clarify that. I uh, to yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Also, I think since we are done, yeah. So feel free to reach me in either way. Could it be via email or could it be uh, via via Yabi, or you may also. Yeah, I can put maybe my email here. So I can I can give you some kind of helpful information around that. Cool. So we can wrap up here. Thanks all for joining and giving.